That logically brings us to the counterfeit kingdom of the church. You can't understand what a counterfeit is until you know the truth. You know, you can't figure out a counterfeit dollar bill mm-hmm. until you have an authentic dollar bill in front of you. And so it's important. But the problem is, if you've seen a counterfeit dollar bill all your life, you might think that's the truth. That's right. <laughs> and so we've got to go to the source of truth to identify truth in order that we can identify the counterfeit. And so let's talk about what the Bible says about the kingdom of God. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 2. This is what Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall happen in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. Many people shall go and say, Come, let's go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion the law shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations, and will decide concerning many peoples, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Verse 1, this is the word which Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. So this is Yahweh giving his information. This is, I mean, not this is not apocrypha, this is not pseudepigrapha, this is not the Quran, this is truth given by the Creator to Isaiah concerning who? Judah and Jerusalem, Israel. And here's the truth. Now it will come about in the last day. So we're talking about towards the end of known time. The mountain of the Lord, that's Mount Zion, will be established as the chief of mountains. Check it out, verse two. All all the Gentiles are going to come to this mountain. This is this is this is the Bible. Verse three. Many people are going to say, "Hey, let's go to the mountain of Yudhevahe, the God of Israel, the God of Jacob, that this God can teach us concerning His ways, and that we can walk in His paths." And verse three says, "The law is actually going to go out from Zion, not the Mosaic law, but the law of God, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem." And guess what the Lord is going to do from Jerusalem? Verse 4. He's going to actually be a judge between the Gentiles. He's going to render decisions. And the nations are not going to be involved in conflict anymore. They're going to take their weapons of war and turn them into weapons of production. Interestingly enough, during this kingdom of God on earth, nation will not lift up sword against nation. And so there will be no more war. It will be time of peace. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end, on the throne of David, and on his kingdom to establish it, and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. On the throne of David and over his kingdom. So this child will rule on David's throne. So what form of government did David adopt or inherit, basically? It was, a king. was it a democracy? No, a king. Was it a, yeah, was it a, uh, it was a monarchy. Good. That was the form of government. Good. Let's come back to verse 9. For a child we will be born to us. Who's us? The church, right? No, it's Israel, okay? (laughs) For child will be born to Israel. A son will be given to us, Israel. And the government, what form of government? The monarchy will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, this guy, whoever it is. Eternal Father, Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace. And there shall be no increase of his what? Monarchy. Government. Or of peace, and on the throne of David over his kingdom. So we know another thing about the um, kingdom of God. It will be a monarchy ruled by the, 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 the descendant of David and the heir to the throne of David. I'm going to ask you to read uh, Isaiah 11, 1 through 9 on your own. There's a lot there about the kingdom of God and what it will look like. Specifically also, Revelation teaches us that the duration of this kingdom, let me just read Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Yeshua and because of the word of God 
and those that had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand, they came to life and reigned with, reigned with Messiah, the heir of David, who will sit on David's throne. The incre- there, there will be an increase in a, of his government that will be everlasting of his monarchy. They will reign with Messiah for a thousand years. So the Bible, and we just took a few scriptures, we want to learn what the Bible teaches about what the kingdom looks like. Peace, rule from Jerusalem by the monarch. Before we take a look at what next week, what the church says about the kingdom, I want to go into these other scriptures and we'll finish. Give me five more minutes and we're done with this. I can't separate these two ideas. Go to Mark chapter 1, because Jesus had a lot to say about this kingdom. And at Mark chapter 1, could someone read verses 14 and 15? Now after John was taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the good news of God's kingdom, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and God's kingdom is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. Okay, so what's the gospel? It says it right there. The, that kingdom we just read about, that's the good news. That's Jesus' gospel. The kingdom. The kingdom. It's here for Israel. You got to do one thing, guys. Repent. Matthew, go to Matthew chapter 4. Jesus went about in all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. Yeshua went through all Galilee, teaching in Israel's synagogues. He didn't teach in church, he didn't teach in any Gentile uh, place. He taught in synagogues. Because why? He proclaimed his gospel. And his gospel is this. That kingdom where the nations submit to Israel and I'm the monarch, that kingdom's here. And he authenticated that gospel by healing every kind of sickness among these Jewish people. Go over to Matthew chapter 9. Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. So, you know, half of his three and a half ministry was spent preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nation of Israel. The kingdom's here. Go to Luke chapter 4. When it was day, he departed and went into an uninhabited place. And the multitudes looked for him and came to him and held on to him so that he wouldn't go away from them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of God's kingdom to the other cities also. For this reason I have been sent. He was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee. So again, we find out that... He, they, they saw the miracles, they tried to grab him, hey, stay here and work some of your magic, like the other shamans do. And he was like, look, hold on a second, I can't stay here. He says in verse 43, I must preach my gospel, the gospel, the, the good news of the kingdom, to other cities. For I, this is why he was sent, for that purpose, to install the messianic kingdom in Israel. And I've got to keep on preaching it. I gotta keep, I've got to give time for this nation to receive their king. Go to Luke chapter 8, then we'll finish. I'll read verse 1. Soon afterwards, he began going around from city to village to another, proclaiming and preaching the kingdom of God. And so question 4 in the outline, what was the good news? What's what's Jesus' gospel? It's, It's that kingdom in Isaiah, that kingdom of this Jewish king ruling from Jerusalem and then being world peace. Well, here's a big problem that replacement theology of the church ran into. If we actually are the true Israel, where's all of this peace and absence of war? And we will cover, we'll continue to cover the church's uh, advocacy of its counterfeit kingdom next Monday.